put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Sinister 2 Mood Review A young mother and her twin sons move into a rural house which has a very distinct connection to Bagul. And, you know, even, even at that, you know, there's something interesting here that can be mined for good scares. You know, within the first one, it's this, you know, smallish house, but in, just in a small town. Here, it's this, you know, much further away, and, yeah, the rural setting, there's, there's some definitely, and, and the movie makes pretty good use of that setting. Deputy so-and-so is back. He's no longer a deputy. They haven't given him a name yet. I, I don't, I guess ex-deputy or possibly just so-and-so. Mr. and so. Mr. and so is now a private investigator and he you know, it's it's not that interesting, but it's it, it makes him money and he can spend the you know the rest of the time studying into Bugul, which is something we really don't see very much of in this, especially compared to the first one. And he you know, he he has some baggage of, you know, feeling I don't know if the word is guilty, but yeah, from what from what happened in the first one, and I'm not going to spoil the first one in this review, but if you watch the movie, it does spoil exactly what happened and early on. the The movie does not require you to have watched the first one, but if you watch this one it does tell you the overall outcome of the first one. But it, it stands on its own quite nicely. And it's, you know, it's been noted that only Anso and Bagul himself are, you know, those are the only characters who reappear. It's not quite as tenuously linked to the first as it might appear though the in the first one there's a certain big name actor who goes uncredited and I believe it was the the I don't remember exactly who but one of the Brad Jones's either him or one of his friends pointing out that he he phoned in his performance having it literally be via Skype and in this one of his colleagues so someone who's basically taken over yeah he he helps out with with the studying and this follows the lore that the first one sets up which yeah, if, if you watch this without having watched the first one, it's gonna feel like they're giving you too much. It's, it's, it's a little exposition heavy early on because of this, which, you know, basically the movie has to cram into the first third what the first movie spent its entire running time establishing, which does also mean that that can't really be built up the way, but there is good build up, uh, nevertheless. But yeah, the and and the yeah. In in addition to the lore, it's also just this. This is very much you know you. 
this makes very clear that this is taking place after what happened in the first one. Like I said, you know, it's genu it's downright stated, and and so is you know go going up, you know, and so it's it's gonna get. I don't know, I'm I'm gonna go with so because and is probably like one of those like like a Dutch name like Van Der Beek or something. It's, you know, you don't you don't need just. I'm I'm just gonna go you know so is continuing the work he started there and it makes sense you know the 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 place we find him in and the way he's progressing makes sense from the first one so as you know it's it's one of the better ish horror sequels that I've seen it follows up on the first one, but it isn't. It isn't quite. Yeah, it, it follows up on it, but it isn't chained to the first one, you know. And I was wondering. Because you know, it's it's we don't find out a lot from the trailers and such. I was wondering if so was going to be as coming off a little dim and as awkward and such in this, or if he, you know, if they had developed his character into, you know, he's he's he steals some from from the. From the search for Bagul, he's a a more yeah no he's he's just as it, <laughs> and they I mean I I feel bad for the guy J James Ransom excuse me I'm not sure I've seen him in anything else but <laughs> I don't know it's just he's continuing I don't I don't know maybe maybe they just really loved that or they felt that they couldn't change I don't know I feel bad for the guy but it is. It is kind of funny that that you know same old act, but yeah, like I believe the very first thing we see of him in this is and uh, not a spoiler. He's he's going into confession, and he literally like you know the the priest has to prompt that this is where you ask, this is where you say, I have some sins to confess. Uh, uh, I have some sins. To confess. Okay, there you go, and. Then he goes on rambling like, "Oh well, I've now ne I've never had a, a confession, uh, at least not. I don't think maybe by accident. No, 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 probably not at all. N not of not of any kind. And I I've never been in a church before. I've never I've never confessed my sins before. I I I just I don't know who else to talk to. And yeah, it is still kind of charming and and funny and yeah." And he he knows what he found out in the first one still, and there is a yeah he's he's very proactive in this one, and it yeah it it runs into a bit of a problem, and I'm not sure I should really specify exactly how. I, I think they probably did a pretty good job of hiding in the trailers exactly what the the situation is that you know, the, the first one, the trailers spoil a lot of the twists and these are not spoiler heavy movies, but these are not twist heavy movies so I guess this time they went you know very very vague and yeah they did pretty well at you know hiding I mean there are there are some things where you're sitting in the theater expecting you know well I know I, I really wish they hadn't I mean if you've seen it already the the hallway scare with so it plays out the exact same way in the movie. I really wish they had done just something to it because it's a good scare. But you know, when you watch the trailer, that's that's it right there in the trailer. And.
and last minute notes and before I go too much further it might already be apparent but I'm freaked out of my mind by this movie right now and whenever I do these videos there's so much nice light and I really don't look forward to to turning it off and this is the part where you know oh he scares really easy the thing the fly the prince of darkness yeah I I you know I've watched some pretty gory, pretty terrifying movies. It's it's you know if you don't have the the craft, if you don't know how to craft good scares, you're not gonna get me. So yeah, I, I hope I've established my cred. This has more talking and dialogue than the first one. And in, in general, this, this tries to be different from the first without... It's, it's clearly still the same world, you might say. It's a... Yeah, it's, it's a different story and a different perspective than the first. But it's still very much the same world, and so we who've watched the first one, we come into it knowing about Bagul and the characters who gradually find out, you know, there is a... You might think that we're just waiting for the characters to catch up, but there are new additions to the, the mythology and they yeah, they do really well at, at building, and yeah, so, so yes, more dialogue, more, more talking in general, and not like, you know, it moves along nicely, you, it doesn't feel like you're just watching people talk and nothing really happening, but where the first one was a movie that was very much in, you know, in this dark office, where Ethan Hawke was sitting and studying and investigating and you know and then watching these you know these movies you know in this it's there is more where Hawke felt very detached and removed and not not like you know he seems like he's he's a good guy he's you know but he kind of buried himself in his work you might say and so it became very much him in darkly lit rooms being scared and in this it's more you know the the various characters in it relate to each other and yeah, the the perspective has shifted. I'm not sure I should go into exactly how just yet. Now, there are interactions between So and the young mother, Courtney, and they are adorably cute and awkward together, and it's just you know it's it's funny and charming and just it it really works i i'm i'm really glad that they did think of something new for him you know there there was no real you know in the, in the first so and it's it's basically him and then hawk's character ellison you know he didn't really you know, but but here, I mean, he also he bonds with Dylan, one of the twins. There's one point. I this. There are jump scares in this. A pretty good amount of them, but also build up and and creepy you know there's the the jump scares in this 
tend to go for the unexpected, and that's where, again, really wish that they hadn't given away the hallway one, because it is cleverly crafted. But there are others. And the two boys, they do look a little different, and thankfully the movie kind of color codes them for us, so it's a little easier to... to tell them apart and such and the the perspective is of the the boys particularly Dylan I believe the other yeah it's Dylan and Zach and Dylan, he is, he can sometimes see things that maybe his mother can't, and the, the missing children are kind of imaginary friends of his, and it's, there, there was maybe a little bit of this in the first one, but here it is very distinct, and they do that. They, they, yeah, it's not a spoiler. They, they very early on give, give a very clear indication that what Dylan can see, the, the, his, his imaginary friends, the missing children, she can't see them. But he can. And like imaginary friends, sometimes the things that they want are maybe not the most wholesome. And yeah, it's it's they they do great with this thing of the of of only you know, of, of the fact that the mother can't see them. And in this, both the the children, these, you know, the, the twins, and Courtney herself play a much bigger part. And that was something I don't... I'm not... It's not really a weakness of the first, because it helped solidify... Ellison's isolation that he does not he doesn't spend that much time with the others because he's working on this book it's it's a big deal true crime it's gonna you know it's gonna put food on the table it's it's important and so he does not really he, he buries himself in his work and in this they change that which again I'm really glad this does a lot of things different from the first and a few of the things they do different, they do better than they were in the first, but a lot of them, it is just, it's different. So it's not just the same thing over. And I'm really glad. I, I really liked the various characters in this. I, I really got into them. And that was something where the first one, it didn't have that many characters. But it was, of course, fun to see the interactions between... <laughs> Both Ellison and So and Ellison and, and Fred Thompson and yeah. And Courtney is a bit of you know, there's there's a southern accent there and now the there's this has a pretty good amount of humor. It's like with both of the Scott Derrickson movies that I've actually watched, The First Sinister and Delivers from Evil, very well used to diffuse the tension just enough that we can breathe, but not so much that we can relax. It's, it's, it's still just, you know, yeah, you have to just release just a little bit of tension every so often and and it does really well and of course a number of them are at the expense of poor so 
this is 90 minutes and it really it it really does not overstay its welcome it's it's a very and and at the same time i i recently watched the fantastic 4 and while that is also a very short movie you know when you know the the last part of it feels like you know there maybe should be more of it it's it's rushed and you know it seems like stuff was cut out and yeah probably was i've heard some i haven't looked too much into that but yeah and in this it really doesn't it's yeah it's it's a full story there's everything that is set up is followed up on and they yeah the the whole story told here yeah you can you can watch this without having watched the first one and it also just you know me having watched the first one yeah this is this is the better I, I didn't really want a sequel, but if we're gonna get one, I'd rather it be good. And this does the right thing. It changes the perspective. It goes to a, a different, different dynamic, different family dynamic, and a different kind of because there's no like Courtney knows that something bad happened. And she knows what happened. I'm not going to tell you what happened. The, the movie itself also plays that, you know, yeah, try, tries to be careful with, with that as well. Although, again, like with the first one, try not to watch too many, too, you know, spend too much time watching the trailers because they do, it's especially the films themselves they give away and that you know, by the nature of it, of course, yeah, these these two films, you spend a lot of time sitting and watching these films, and if you, yeah, how, how else do you promote a movie like that, other than saying, you know, this is, you know, these are some of the things that they're sitting and watching. Now, now this does get the feeling of isolation and kind of, you know, that that the first also had, and this. There's this sense of yeah, I I can say without spoiling the place they're living. Part of the property has just been straight up abandoned. Like this, people have not been living here for a while, and yeah, the movie does well at at using that. For, for scares and it, yeah it just it has this real sense of something you know abandoned it's it's always it's just inherently creepy when something has clearly been abandoned when it it it's it's sort of the same thing in like zombie stories and the Silent Hill the the town of Silent Hill recently abandoned it clearly this was used people lived here and there was a real and then it ended and it's just it's creepy to it it feels just like there's there's they left something behind didn't they something there's something maybe intangible but but you don't feel good about being there or in this case looking at people being there and it, Courtney, she fixes up furniture and the like. 
And she does this right by the abandoned place on the property. And you're just like, find somebody else to work, some, somewhere else to work. And yes, so the I already mentioned that this is in a lot of ways different from the first one. Apparently, this one, you know, they they you know as inspiration took took as inspiration Children of the Corn, which I have not read, but that first film is great. I think I watched what was it the second and the fourth? They're okay, but. The first one, especially, and especially before the ending, but yeah, it's and it, it makes a lot of sense for this one. And if you haven't watched the first one and you don't want spoilers, try not to think too hard about what that entails. But yeah, there is this thing of you know, children being dangerous, being, being you know, yeah, trying trying to take over and this kind of cult kind of situation and yeah, and yeah, this uses that really really well and again at 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 this point if if you have watched the first film and this is the first time you're hearing this kind of you know Journal of the Corn kind of inspiration let it let it simmer a little don't don't make up your mind about how you feel about that right away but just give give it a little time and and see if you don't I, I found that after you know upon reflection I quite like that and you might not but just give it give it a little bit of time and yeah where the first one was based on a very interesting idea. I've, I've heard some say that it's like the most, you know, one of the most interesting horror films in years. I don't watch a lot of current horror. I just, I see the trailers and I don't like what I see, so I don't watch them. And yeah, basically I, I am watching the Sinister series now that it's a series. But I'm, I'm watching what Scott Derrickson puts out. I have been sin since the, the 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 first sinister and I watch so so you know also Dolores from Evil and I watch Paranormal Activity I like some of them and as of the fifth one I just want to see where they take this I am fascinated that apparently from the trailers the next one is actually gonna follow up on the very end of the fifth one and that is wild that is just because I really th I and you can go and check I said in the video they are trolling us this is this is just from the trailers apparently not they are they are you know going full speed with this thing and I really want to see whether it takes off or crashes and but but yeah you know as for the, yeah one and three are great Four is crap, two is okay, and the fifth one is just a blast, man. It's just, it's out there. And it will find you, and you will be delighted, I want to say. So, the... I worried that, the, you know, from, from the trailers, I worried that this would be, you know, kind of the situation of overexposure. And like I said, the first one very gradually introduces the various elements. And then in this one, it's, you know, yeah, exposition dumped fairly early on that just explains everything that took time to get to in the first one and introducing some new ones, to be fair. And, yeah, I, I gotta say, they they did enough original stuff with it, excuse me, without losing the core. Yeah, you might say, 
excuse me, the, the, the a symptom of overexposure is that what we used to think really highly of, we are now a little more accustomed to, and it doesn't have the same effect. And I would say, at least to an extent, this does not get into overexposure territory with that. This again focuses on danger, some danger to children and such, and yeah, like I've already said, the, the, I don't think I've said it, spelled it out yet, but I've kind of danced around. In the first movie, it was from the perspective of Ellison, and he was the one watching these films, and yes, I am intentionally not giving away the nature of these films, because if someone is watching this and hasn't watched either of the movies or the trailers, I want them to be surprised by what's on. Basically, we're watching home movies from from families, and where in the first it was Ellison watching. Now the perspective is on the children, especially Dylan, and he's the one watching, and. You see a little bit in the trailers, it's his imaginary friends who walk up to him and offer up and say, this is, this is my home movie. And they, they're clearly very excited to show it to him with excited is they're, they're creepy children. So of course they're, they're only going to be so, you know, you, you have to. They, they want to, they want to, they want to, to, to show them, to show him, them. And there is a nice, gradually growing, the home movies get to be more unpleasant as the film goes on for various reasons. And the both of these films were written by the you know yeah written by the same two people and one of those two people Scott Derrickson also directed the first one and you can really tell he his fingerprints are all over this thing and it is good he clearly. There's, you know, whenever something is made into a series that was not meant to be, because when you watch the first film, you really don't get the sense that it was supposed to become a series. But Hollywood is out of ideas, and everything that works gets sequels today, and remakes, and reboots, and tie in, yeah. A lot of people in his situation would just say, you know, whatever, I'll just do the first one over again, or I'll just give them some bland story, because I don't really care about that. It's, you know, I'm not directing, it's not, but he, he really put effort into making this consistent with the first one, and yet different enough and very interesting. I really, really like what he did with what he had built in the first one, and there is no sense that a lot of horror sequels, the problem is that the people who, that they don't really care and or didn't really, and or don't really understand why it worked, you know, see the, the Halloween sequels. Even John Carpenter tried to, you know, yeah, he clearly was not into making 
in into writing Halloween too. You can you can really really clearly tell. But yeah, that's that's usually where it goes wrong. And to see when it, I think this is the the way you successfully make more than one story out of horror. I've only really seen good... Some some stories lend themselves to it, but I... What I've seen, you know, the, the tendency that I've seen is that when you do more than one entry in, you know, when, when you make a series out of a horror story, out of a horror concept, it quickly gets to be just retreads and you know and and then these stories were clearly they didn't get what worked you know in the original or you know whatever the when it was good and yeah i i think you have to make it different enough but part of the same world the silent hill games do this or at least somewhat they they really really want to stick to that whole cult thing I, I really find that they're more interesting with it again you know the the first one is amazing the second one is amazing the third is amazing in spite of it being a sequel to the first and I really didn't because the second one isn't a sequel as such it just takes place in the same world that the first built up but yeah and yeah this this does that really well does enough different but keeps enough intact the 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 children in the first one i personally found to be one of the weaker elements and i really did not care much for when we really saw them a lot on screen and I cannot at all say that for this one. It's it's completely I I don't know if if Scott Derrickson realized that they weren't that good of an element in the first one, but in this they're just such a good element. They really see in in the first movie, you might say that what really builds is Ellison finding all of these signs during his investigation that I'm on edge I, I you might be able to tell and and these these signs point to something that he eventually arrives at and that is what we're watching and that is what we're really engaged in. I, I would also say, as I said before, you, you know, the eventual outcome of the first one is, you know, spot this. So if, if you watch this first, you know, you'll know the overall outcome of the first. And, you know, in this you'll also find out a lot of the, the details. I would still go and watch the first one. It really does yeah, even even knowing, you know, even if if you go and and I I would it it would still be very very effective. But in this, like I said, you don't see a lot of investigating of Bagul, and really instead it's. In part, it's the imaginary children who 
they don't really approach Dylan in, intentionally scary. They they come off as creepy, but they they're friendly to him. They just want to show him their movies, and that's they they do sometimes get more. intimidating but as a whole they yeah what child hasn't had imaginary friends and he's also having these nightmares and it seems like if he watches the movies maybe the nightmares will go away and I suppose that more or less covers that but yeah and it's also they also cast some really great creepy kids Irv from Everwood is in this. He's the he's the priest from the the confession thing, and he's real good. He's you know he has that grandfatherly friendly quality to him that he does on Everwood. I he's been in other stuff. That's all I know him from. But he also has the required. Yeah, you can you can tell that there is you know, he is he is a priest. He has he has knowledge of evil. And yeah, and and unfortunately this doesn't really have a fun unexpectedly cool character like the grumpy sheriff played by Fred Thompson who I might point out was misnamed by several of the Channel Awesome producers. Linkara got it wrong, Spoonie got it wrong, of course Snob got it right. And the... Among the children, there is, there is sort of a, a main one. I believe he's called Milo. And yeah, I mean, this kid has a lot of lines. This kid has a lot of screen time, and he really, it works. He really just, yeah, he's, he is tense. You, you get, there's, he makes you, at the very least, uneasy. You can, you can kind of see how, you know, a child might, excuse me, might just be, you know, yeah, be, be, you know, find him inviting enough, interesting enough, and yet we can very much tell that, that something is wrong. And that is, of course, also a big part of a good horror movie, is that you, you look at something and you're like, oh, don't, don't go in that door, don't trust that person, don't do that ritual. And at the same time, we can kind of understand, we could kind of put ourselves in that situation. It, it really sucks if we can't. You know, it's always frustrating when you're watching a horror movie and you can't see yourself in the situation that the character is in. And yeah, that's, that's one problem of, you know, not so good horror. Now, Bugul in this... I think they went as far as they could with him in the first one as um, as far as what would work and that is maybe where we get a little bit into overexposure but 
he's still, you know, you don't look at him and you aren't scared. It's just that the scares they do with him in this don't really, they're, they're nowhere near as good as the ones in the first. And they're not that, yeah, they're just, they're not that good. And actually some of the, the films also aren't that, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> I'm finding myself kind of trying to recommend this film because there's a lot, lot to like here. But yeah, some of these key elements do really just not work as well. Yeah, and, and it's again, watching the trailers, even even just watching the trailers, I got the sense that this is this is not good use of your bagul. This is a yeah, and yeah, in the movie it's it's kind of the same, but the this this goes you know this goes so far as to say that he is he's found in all cultures. Which is, of course, you know, it's it's pretty ridiculous to just state, oh, it's all cultures, just you know, all of them. But it's obviously not as you know compelling of a line to say that in all of the ones that we've been able to translate and research, most of those he appears. Although at times, you know, you, you need the big proclamations, and it is a really cool idea. And with that, it also, you know, they, they also say that the, in addition to, to film, he can live in literature and music. And we see some examples of this, and they use that is one thing. If I, I would maybe you know you may not want to watch the trailers before you watch the movie, just so you know nothing gets spoiled or such. But once you've seen the movie, do watch the trailers because the use of that boogeyman song is really really good, and yeah, and the. This is the second film of this director, and his first was apparently not very good. It got like a 5.4 and 60 scores, so yeah. I, right from the start, right from the first time I watched the Red Band trailer, I was really glad to see that this gets using you know, parts of your title to, to show, like, really gory stuff does it right. Because in this, you know, the, the title could be these Roman numerals and the two, you know, the two eyes in, in two are, like, hang people. See, that's how you do it. Not, not like Dead Island, where the eye is, you know... It's been a while since I checked, but yeah, I think like the eye is the person, but then the tree isn't. The tree that the person is hanging from isn't a letter at all, and it's just awkward looking. And I just feel like, why didn't they just make the eye the tree, and then the person the L? And you know, to, to signify that it's an L, maybe their their shoes are hanging off and it's, uh, something. But just yeah, you you gotta go all the way if you're gonna do something like that in my book. This does pretty well at just giving clues, not not over explaining what's you know yeah, you 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 have an idea of overall what's going on, but there are things you don't expect. 
and much like the first one, this has some 1980s John Carpenter going on. You know, some Prince of Darkness, definitely. And, yeah, some, some of the some of the tension of the thing as well. And, you know, I say of the first that it really, the first Sinister, really smothers you, just pins you down to the ground and holds you there for the duration of the film. This does not quite reach that. It's, it's consistently good, but again, some of the main elements do have problems. Again, you know, Bagul himself and the films themselves. And this again, you know, in this, you know, it's not that people never turn their lights on, which, yeah, but it, the, the scares are very much from the sound design, the way this uses sound effects, silence, excuse me, and loud noises really, really well. And the cinematography and style also really work. The, the, the trailer actually has this, a very, very good example of such with Dylan waking up from the bed and the camera sort of follows him up as he, you know, and he walks down the stairs and, you know, he's like half asleep and such. And maybe the audience sees something that he doesn't fully realize. It's just, yeah. And, yeah, things, things like that. And, yeah, there's a lot of creepy going on here. There are a lot of creepy little noises and details that, you know, and, and there are also some of the things that we're scared of and such are really messed up, sick things. It has a very effective atmosphere from start to finish. The music is used quite well. And this has some very graphic and gory violence and it's honestly it's it's more gross than scary when it when it goes to that the the film works best when you don't really well there are some of those some of those are you very effective as well, but the film works best when it's little hints, these these noises or something you, you see that, you know, yeah, something you see that really freaks you out, but not, not something especially gory, and yeah, actually the first one doesn't have that much gore. It has some really sick and disturbing images, but and and that's again that's where this does best when it's not gory when it's when it sticks to the the sick and twisted stuff this goes into the some of I've already mentioned, you know, the, the violence and the gore. Some of the stuff here does kind of get into to torture porn, and I don't think the first particularly did. It got close, but it stayed just... I'm not going to say that the first quite steered clear of tasteless stuff. Some some of the best stuff in the first was quite tasteless, but it it does it right. And that's yeah, again the the some of the best stuff in this is still when it's when it's tasteless, but not yeah, not not like overtly kind of 
torture porn and and such but it does very much have the voyeur quality and you know yeah and and it makes the audience a voyeur much like the first one we we are sitting watching these very private moments these home movies these were not made for public consumption these these are not professionally these are these are intimate moments not necessarily you know not sex tape intimate but still you know these are these are not for you know too many other people to really watch and some have some have said that the you know that the the scary stuff and such in this is all CG and that it's bad CG I agree that it's bad but I don't think as much of it is CG as I there, there are some parts that are very distinctly CG but on the whole it didn't look too much to me like like CG I found the vast majority of it very convincing but yeah some of some of the death based stuff very clearly CG and yeah frustratingly so because it it looks fake and we don't really yeah we don't buy it and it just it's not effective and some of these things you could have done you know practically and yeah, I'm, I'm not one of those people who say this should always be practical. If, if it can only be done with CG, or it should be done with CG, by all means. But there are some things in this that very clearly could and should have been practically. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.